The ping-pong effect between the two pits of legalism and license extends beyond the church. Listen to the following scenarios and see if they sound familiar. Society is becoming damaged by a licentious culture of binge drinking which leads to antisocial behaviour and health issues. The government recognises the problem and seeks to tackle it by introducing new minimum pricing laws, laws restricting availability, laws restricting advertising and laws restricting distribution. Society is developing an obesity problem that is fast approaching critical levels and putting a strain on the economy. People are eating too much and not exercising enough. To tackle the problem, the government decides to introduce laws restricting fast food advertising, laws on nutritional requirements, laws banning fast food outlets within a certain radius of schools, laws on food labelling and laws that increase taxes on unhealthy food. Society is under threat from terrorists who are using their freedom to plot death and destruction. To tackle the problem, the government introduces new laws that allow phone monitoring and email interception. They also introduce laws allowing CCTV cameras to monitor the movements of the citizens. They introduce laws on ID cards, laws that allow detention in prison without charge, and laws that allow private data to be accessed by government officials. People use their freedom of speech to incite acts of terror against innocent civilians. The government responds by introducing hate speech laws that take away the right to freely express opinions. True freedom of speech quickly vanishes. The banks act recklessly by using their freedom to pursue greed and self-interest. As a result, they put the global economy in jeopardy. Governments tackle the problem by introducing new laws, regulations and taxes to monitor, curb and restrict the operations of the banks. Newspaper journalists are found to be using their freedom to act immorally and have been hacking private phone messages to get stories. The government tackles the problem by imposing new laws and regulations that curb, monitor and restrict the freedom of the press. Or how about these to finish? A mother loses her daughter in a car accident because a driver was drunk. Even though there are existing drink driving laws, the mother campaigns tirelessly to get new, tighter laws introduced so that it can never happen again. Now what is happening in all these scenarios is basically this. The people are using their freedom to be reckless, greedy, self-serving, hedonistic, sinful and licentious and then the government is trying to cure the problem with laws. What they're basically saying each time is, because you aren't using your freedom well but are instead using it to act immorally, we're going to have to legislate to take some of that freedom away. If you won't behave properly, we'll have to make you behave properly by force of law. In other words, the government makes exactly the same mistake that the Pharisees did. For more scenarios like the ones mentioned, simply go to your TV, turn on the news and watch for 10 minutes. You will, before very long, eventually hear someone somewhere calling for a law change in a vain attempt to cure some form of immorality. Like the Pharisees, the perceived answer is always for more laws, stricter laws, tighter laws, harsher laws. And if the people still don't behave, then pile more laws on top of those. And if the people find loopholes, close the loopholes with even more laws, and so on. The idea is that people will eventually be forced to behave in the right way. As our study has revealed, not only is this method of tackling sin completely futile because law has no power to change hearts and indeed just gives unregenerate hearts more laws to break, but by piling mountains of laws on top of the citizens, we are becoming ever more restricted, controlled and oppressed by our governments. Remember how the Israelites became so controlled by legalism that they can no longer lift two jugs of milk on the Sabbath. Individual liberty was eaten up and instead, people became controlled by the teachers of the law. In the exact same way, liberty is slowly being eaten up today as governments increasingly try to control the increasing immorality with more and more laws, and we citizens are becoming less and less free. Every time someone commits an immoral act, the clamour is on to tighten the law to stop it happening again. We've already gone beyond the point where we can legitimately call ourselves free. We tend to think that just by virtue of our citizenship in a Western democracy that we are. But if you want to put it to the test, I invite you to preach the truth of the word of God in public. Then wait to see how long it is before you are arrested. Speak against false religion or homosexuality and you will be hit with hate speech charges. I'm afraid that freedom of thought and speech is simply a myth these days and ultimately that is the litmus test for liberty. 
Today, you are only free to express views which are in keeping with the governments. If you wear a cross to work, you can lose your job. In the absence of God, governments or man become the moral arbiters of the day and you speak your mind under the threat of prosecution. Political correctness in speech is just a euphemism for linguistic fascism. If your words don't match up with what the government considers acceptable, then you have to watch out. The media and education systems strengthen the herd mentality and destroy independent thought. And as the government continually grabs power to control and restrict under the pretense of security and necessity, not only does democracy and freedom become a cruel illusion, but those elected to serve become ever more tyrannical and corrupt. William Pitt the Younger said, Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. If you want to see what happens when you follow this path through to its natural conclusion, all you have to do is refer to the communist regimes of the Soviet Union or China. Regimes that deliberately attempted to stamp out God, replace him with a secular humanistic societal structure, made man the moral arbiter of all things, took power away from the individual and put it in the hands of the government, and who therefore ended up enslaving their citizens to the state.